It's the semifinals, Jake Van Lunen. This is TJ Rogers joining you. I'm sure you needed to know. And we've got Eric <laughs> Froelich with Turbo Fog up against Logan Nettles with Black Red Aggro. It's going to be a mountain, but none of that Beaumont Courier that you said was really going to be a card to look out for. Kari Zev joins the battlefield with just an irrigated farmland for Eric Froelich. Yeah, and Logan getting to be on the play here, uh, that's going to help quite a bit. Uh, his strong record in the Swiss allowed him to do that. Uh, search for Azcanta there from Eric. Uh, coming down early, not going to play good defense here, but it looks like an aggressive start. No one drop, but uh, playing something that represents three power into a PNLR, that means that uh, Eric's going to have his work cut out for him trying to survive this game. Yeah, and going into turn four with four attackers after only casting two spells, it's a nice way to really spread it out some of the ways that uh, Eric, you know, a large m number of the ways that he's really going to be stopping damage are with these fog effects, Root Snare and Hades of Pollen. But down the way, Settle the Wreckage is going to be another card that he leans into heavily. And being able to have a fairly wide board so that you can diversify your attackers to not play into it too much could be a really big upside for Nettles. Yeah, and I think that uh, better players definitely get rewarded when they're playing against cards like Settle the Wreckage. It's going to be Gift of Paradise coming on down. Not a single basic around but this is not exactly the matchup where Field of Rune is a concern of his. So that Hinterland Harbor is now going to be able to tap for m multiple mana. And Eric Frolik is going to find himself back up to 20 life with a search for Azkanta alongside it. He's got to be feeling pretty good so far. He, the shields are down this turn. It's going to be a Rekindling Phoenix and that attack in for six. Karizev is going to create Ragavan. We've got PNLR and that Thopter jumping into the fray. But with Eric Frelick untapping here, this is where he's going to have that five mana mark. And if he's able to walk into a situation with Teferi as his play for the turn and then be holding up Root Snare or Haze of Pollen, he will have taken a mighty leap in this game. That's absolutely true. And that's exactly what Eric wants to be doing here on this fourth turn. Uh, he has to come into play tap land. So unable to play Teferi into a fog on this turn. Uh, is leaving open mana, though. Uh, which will allow him to cast Settle the Wreckage. So here's where we get to watch uh, whether or not Logan is uh, going to play around that, uh, that card. I mean, Logan knows that Eric only has two copies in his deck. He may decide that his best chance of winning is to simply assume that Eric did not draw the card, uh, get in as much damage as possible. But he could also, um, you know, play a bit safer, uh, maybe set up an attack uh, that would leave Eric dead over the course of two turns as opposed to just an all-out swing here. One thing to just keep in mind, you might be looking at that mana base for Eric Frolik and thinking, well, he can't even cast that Cell of the Wreckage because he only has the one white source in the Irrigated Farmland. But actually, Gift of Paradise, what that does is it means the Enchanted Land doesn't only produce, you know, two mana, an additional one, plus that blue or green. It's actually, it adds two mana of any one color. So That's you precisely can true. use that land to add the white white that you need for that Settle the Wreckage. Does a great job of really making that mana base come together, especially when you have s a lot of these cards that cost multiple uh, when it comes to that sort of devotion, if you will. Mm -hmm. So we're going to attack in with Kari Zev and Rekindling Phoenix, leaving back the PNLR and this Thopter. This is still a pretty sizable swing in for seven with Eric Froelich at 14. I think this is a consideration that if this gets through, even if there's not the Settle the Wreckage, it's a two-turn clock regardless. And that's exactly true. So this is what Logan decided. Logan decided I could attack for 10 and get completely blown out by Settle the Wreckage, or I could attack for seven, have the same exact number of turns to win the game, and put myself in a position where I will not be so badly destroyed by the card. The oh. other thing he does... Uh, he <laughs> He's going to follow it up with a Chandra really quick, plus that one up. It's a heart of Kieran. I bet he wishes he could cast that one, but the two damage will be just fine. Please continue, JVL. So uh, one thing that he did that I really like there was the two cards that he left back were PNLR plus the Thopter token. What that does is that if Eric does decide to go for the Settle the Wreckage on that turn, it gives Logan Nettles a ton of land, which he can then use to pump into that Thopter to create additional damage in the future. Very nice. So it's going to be Glimmer of Genius for Eric Frolik at the end step. Take a look at the top two, put them on the top or the bottom, and then you draw two, add two energy, and then he is going to be heading into his turn. You see Torture Defiance up there. A whole lot of modes, a whole lot of options, but 
With Eric Froelich at five, you also got to consider this is a card that is offering a non-combat way to apply pressure. Yeah, Glimmer of Genius there, a card that, uh, you know, Eric is hoping finds him that combination of uh, Teferi into either Haze of Pollen or Root Snare here. That's precisely what he wants. Mm -hmm. Currently sitting on five mana, so he will not be able to cast Nexus of Fate this turn. Can't combine, you know, a, a Teferi coming down, he still can't really make that one combine. Though, the Shields are down, Logan Nettles is tapped out. This is going to be another copy of Gift of Paradise, so we're going to go back up to eight with four mana remaining. We did not see the Settle the Wreckage last turn, but it is still very much a threat, and after firing down both a Glimmer of Genius, drawing two cards, and putting a card into the graveyard from Search for Azkanta and drawing, that means that there have been three opportunities, not even including the Scry, that the Settle the Wreckage, which there are two copies of, could be in hand now. Yeah, and uh, it, with that extra Gift of Paradise, if Eric has another untapped land in hand, on the following turn, he would be able to set up Teferi into End Step Nexus of Fate by casting a Teferi uh, off of two lands that had Gift of Paradise, untapping those two lands, and then having seven mana on his end step. The Teferi essentially costing one mana. Gift of Paradise and Teferi is just an all-star combination in this deck, and it just continues to prove itself. And early on in it, I, I saw a couple of people discussing, you know, why are you doing Gift of Paradise over Spring to Mind? And I think the answer became very quickly apparent. So we do see the attack in. It is Settle the Wreckage, and we saw this PNLR hanging back, but the Thopter tried to get in, adding to that swing to make it an attack for eight, a lethal amount. Last turn, we only saw that swing in for seven. That Thopter was really just trying to get the last point in, but now we lose that Mana Sink. Yeah, so uh, it, I assume that Logan Nettles has uh, a, a powerful po follow-up play here, probably in the form of uh, Scrap Heap Scrounger plus another two drop. I think that uh, based on the way he attacked and the way this uh, game structure has gone, it's how it's going to be. He could also, though, simply try to grind out further advantage with this Chandra. He knows that that's a card that Eric's deck doesn't really have a way to get off the table. And the only way Eric can really beat that Chandra is by going into you know, the chaining stage of the game, wherein he, uh, he's able to use those uh, Nexus of Fates alongside a Planeswalker. So we are going to go ahead and plus up that Chandra that exiles the top card of the library. He can either cast it or it deals two damage to Eric. It's a land. You can't cast those. You can only play them. So that's going to stay in exile, and Eric is going to find himself at six life. Scrap Heap Scrounger, the follow-up play, and there is three mana remaining for Logan Nettles. A PNLR, that Scrap Heap Scrounger, and I think that card is more intimidating than you might initially think it looks like a 3-2 it acts like a 3-2 but PNLR she's got a she's got a wrench she's got a couple of ways to really kind of gear up this scrounger and get it ready for a much better fight and that's absolutely true so he, we presume that Logan Nettles would have a scrounger in hand because he attacked with the artifact uh, now he still has something which he can use to pump with the PNLR the other thing that's interesting here is that if Eric tries to somehow exile the Scrap Heap Scrounger with something like a Settle the Wreckage, Logan can simply sacrifice it to the PNLR's ability, and in doing so, we'll be able to continually reanimate it, uh, applying pressure on Eric from multiple angles with that and the Chandra. Though, notably, we do not actually have any black mana in the, uh, available right now for Logan Nettle, so he would not mm -hmm. be able to bring back that Scrap Heap Scrounger at the end step and be able to attack with it next turn. Oh, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't get settled until the next turn anyway because it would have True. to attack. Yeah. Great point. Great point. <laughs> I've been watching too many Braska's Contempts this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> That's where my mind is at. Oof. All right, so as gone to the Sunken Ruin, and we are still trying to make a game plan happen. It's irrigated farmland. There's still four mana remaining, but it's just going to be a pass back. I, I guess it's actually five mana, but I'm very much expecting three of this to get invested into that Oscon to the Sunken Ruin, unless there is a great way to stop this in the form of Settle the Wreckage or Haze of Pollen or Root Snare. Yeah, and I mean, if, if Eric already has a Root Snare, then uh, he'll be able to use the Root Snare and activate his Oscon to the Sunken Ruin. Uh, if he doesn't have any sort of answer, then he'll have an opportunity to uh, try to find a Root Snare via the Azkanta sun the Sunken Ruin. So this turn, uh, while it seems like there's a good chance that Logan Edel could win right away, and there is, 
um, it's worth noting that Eric has a lot of options at his disposal. Yeah, and I think he actually might come up just one short. It does cost three for that and two for the root snare, the haze of pollen. So he might be just a oh, little bit right. shy. Oh, you're right. He's just shy. The, uh, the other gift of paradise line is tapped. No matter. Root snare was in hand all <laughs> along. <laughs> so he didn't need it. Well, that scrap heap scrounger not really going to be looking too impressive suddenly. It's going to be that root snare immediately. And we are going to fire off cut to ribbons on our own scrap heap scrounger. Look at this mana base right now. Does that look like enough to you? It does. Oh, Very nicely yes. played. The Chandra able to produce some mana as well if needed. That is going to be ribbons. Black, black, and then X. The opponent loses X life, taking down game one. Jabberwocky, Logan, Nettles grabbing that game against a board that seemed... Very impressive. We even saw the root snare really prevent all that damage, but he was able to get a lot of really early pressure, and I think it was the lack of that Teferi Hero of Dominaria and that lack of having a Nexus Fate to really, you know, combine that Planeswalkers and those extra turns meant that he was really, at the end of the day, just a, a life gain deck that was trying to win with root snare. Yeah, and, uh, you know, when you don't have those Planeswalkers, when you're unable to find them with your card selection spells, it really, really weakens the power of the deck because you end up throwing away cards simply to survive, and at some point your opponent's going to have the tools they need to beat you. Uh, Eric, you know, that game, he did have uh, perhaps an opportunity to fire off a Settle the Wreckage earlier on uh, when Logan Nettles uh, made an initial attack. Uh, he chose not to. He chose to play slower. Uh, Logan Nettles... I think most black red players would have lost that game there, but he was wise. He found the angle. He got that settle to be used in the right way, was able to uh, get the settle to be used so that he could get enough lands out of his deck so that he could have that lethal ribbons after cutting his own creature. And uh, a beautiful play there. A card you don't really see do well in this matchup very often. Yeah, I mean, just having the, the presence of mind to recognize, all right, it's cut to ribbons, it's a removal spell, and there's nothing to remove in this Fog mm -hmm. deck. Really kind of, you know, thinking to himself, what are the other ways that I can put this card to use in this matchup? Taking a card that you would presume dead, sort of, or maybe you can put it into the graveyard off of a Beaumont Quarry or something like that, but recognizing what he can actually do to really maintain the usability of this card. Absolutely. Uh, Eric Froelich, he had a very good game one matchup here. Post board, he's going to have to deal with cards like Duress. He's going to have to deal with a Doomfall. He's going to have to deal with a couple copies of Insult to Injury. So this matchup definitely improves for Logan post board. But if there's anybody capable of uh, winning this matchup, it's Eric Froelich. Here he is. He's already into the semifinals playing this Turbo Fog deck. I'm sure he's played against Black Red strategies throughout the weekend. And... Uh, he knows what he has to do to win. And it definitely involves having a, a Teferi at some point of the game. I mean, you'd expect to find one at some point, right? Yeah, I mean, you're running <laughs> four of them. You, you expect to find it. And, of course, Eric Froelich, he is in the hunt already in the Hall of Fame, but trying to check one box that has sort of been half-checked as of yet the individual Grand Prix win. You know, he's had a couple of oh, team. Oh, that surprises Grand me Prix's. that he has that he hasn't won an individual Grand Prix. I mean, he's had phenomenal results, a variety of top eights, but mm -hmm. his wins in Grand Prix have been in team events. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's kind of it's a little bit angling. Yeah, he he's a Grand Prix champion already. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <Come> but <laughs> you know, I guess I'm just kind of taken away from Marshall here. Marshall was of the mentality last round of you got to have it for yourself too, right? The team okay. event, those right. are fine too, but you got to have that trophy that you get to throw up right onto your mantle. Yeah. I think it's understandable that I take particular umbrage with that. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was only recently, <laughs> JVL, that you lost the crown of being the most recent team <laughs> Pro Tour winner. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, was, it was a heartbreaking moment for me. Not for them, I'm sure. Oh, no, no, no. I, it wasn't a heartbreaking moment at all, actually. <laughs> I had a great time watching that Pro Tour. That was some of the most fun I've had watching a Pro Tour ever. Wow. Getting to watch Legacy at a Pro Tour level? Oh, my goodness. Legacy, Modern Standard, yeah. it all came together that weekend. Everything. Yeah, Ed, all, all weekend I just watched Josh Hutter late and was just like, he's unstoppable. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look at that man. 
Oh, goodness. It's the truth. I mean. That's how I felt. And now you've got Eric Froelich here, and he's making it, getting it done with Turbo Fog, which isn't quite the same deck. In fact, I'd say it's a pretty polar opposite to that Death Shadow deck. But they're both uh, attacking on an axis that you wouldn't normally expect. Is that is that close enough for you? Sure. I mean, they're, they're, they're both powerful magic strategies. Powerful <laughs> magic happening yeah. here on the battlefield, and these players are going to be getting ready. Turbo Fog on the play. Does that make... Is it a bigger difference that Turbo Fog is on the play or that Black Red Egg Arrow is on the draw? Oh, man, that's, it's, that's a it's weird question. I don't, even know. I, <laughs> I don't even know how to answer that. I know. I suppose <laughs> what I'm thinking about more is that does the turn sequence for Eric Froelich change at all when he's on the play and he knows that he's that land up? Or is it really going to just be the benefit that Logan Nettles is one turn behind him that matters more to him than his actual uh, turn sequencing because of being on the play? Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of just like imagine you just have, like, one extra imaginary fog. Sure. Right? Because you're down a card, so that's the fog, but you're up a turn. <laughs> okay. So it's like it, like for a deck whose game plan revolves so heavily around, uh, you know, preventing an opponent from having a, uh, a strong combat step, uh, being on the play is just incredibly powerful. Uh, because we've seen it before, and it's very possible we could see it again, but Eric's the type of deck that can essentially win on the fourth turn you know, in a lot of situations, and obviously it never actually wins on the fourth turn, but what I mean by that is that there are games where uh, Eric's deck casts Gift of Paradise and a land on the third turn, casts Teferi on the fourth turn, untaps two lands, then uses Haze of Pollen and or Root Snare, and then is able to untap with the Deferi in play and start chaining cards like Nexus of Fate. And uh, when the deck does that, its its power level is unmatched in standard right now. Yeah, and I mean, taking a question like that, which, you know, I probably could have done better that question. Way to, way to take that one out and actually just offer something. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what am I doing with this question? Man, you took that in perfect direction I, th I thought I thought it was a decent question <laughs> I've, I've had worse questions asked of me before <laughs> in my life somebody once asked if I'd like them to put pineapple on my pizza what was the answer no obviously come on it's a given all right looks like the players <laughs> are all set so let's head on down and watch game two of this one I think these players are just getting set with their scries so it is going to be diving into game two here in the semifinals. Glacial Fortress kicking things off for Eric Froelich into Logan Nettles' turn. And it's going to be a Canyon Slough coming into the battlefield. Tapped that cycling land. Currently just hanging out, waiting for its time to shine. Into Eric Froelich's turn. One thing is he's got a bunch of lands in hand, but if he's got anything like a Hinterland Harbor, in there, that's still in a position of entering the battlefield, tapped his mana base. A lot of these lands really reliant on having another copy of either these basics or these cycle lands that have those basic land types in the text box. Yeah, uh, that's really important for having his lands come into play untapped. And, uh, you know, if you're going to take full advantage of being on the play, you're going to need to do that. And it's going to be <laughs> Charter Course that comes down, draws two cards, and then you wouldn't even notice the last part of that card. You have to discard a card. Nexus of Fate. That one goes in, and it's actually going to end up shuffled into the library, and so the only evidence of it is the Lone Chart, of course, in the graveyard. A nice two-mana play. Digs decently. Really just two cards deeper. That discard, not always that big of a downside. It's joined by Karizev from Logan Nettles. This is exactly what his game plan was last time, and that worked out great for him. If he's able to follow this up with something like that PNLR once more, the pressure will keep coming in. But from Froelich, it is going to be Gift of Paradise. Really, this is sort of just a, a slight change in who's going first, but these are very similar plays to what we saw last time. Yeah, and uh, Logan being on the draw, not having a one-drop, that's not where he wants to be. And uh, you remember last game, at before Eric had even cast that Gift of Paradise, he had already been attacked. He had already uh, dealt had a PNLR on the other side of the table. So very similar uh, line here from Logan, but just being on the draw really makes it seem a lot less powerful. Goblin Chain Whirler enters the battlefield. It's the classic turn three these days. You know, it's a good one. It deals its damage in down to 19, and it's going to be Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, that enters the battlefield. This is going to plus up, untapping that Hinterland Harbor and that forest, which has a Gift of Paradise. So actually three mana 
available this turn for Eric Froelich if he wants to try and do anything to prevent it. This is an attack in for six. Could be pointing this at Teferi Hero of Dominaria, but it's gonna be Haze of Pollen. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Nothing doing for Logan Nettles. No trace of what he was attempting to do. Yeah, and uh, we talked about it before this game even, what the uh, the essential turn four kill from the Turbo Fog deck, and Eric just demonstrated it on camera. Here, he had Gift of Paradise on the third turn, he had to ferry on the fourth turn, and had a fog effect to go with it. So those three cards, along with the mana to cast them, now, if Eric is able to have a Nexus of Fate in his hand, uh, we can just watch things get wildly out of hand. Chandra enters the battlefield, pluses up for mana, two red mana, and it is used on a Scrap Heap Scrounger joining the battlefield. Got to try and get some kind of pressure because Eric Froelich is just starting to stack it up. Yeah, and uh, here uh, it looks like he's going to his end step, so he taps that mana. Uh, then uses Teferi to untap it. Now, Nexus of Fate. Seven mana, it's an instant, which means that you can cast it during the end step, which is how you see him really take advantage of that unt untap two lands ability of Teferi. So while you only see those three lands right now, take that four mana, combine it with that forest with the Gift of Paradise and another land that we saw tap for mana before the untap. That's the seven required, and we are now heading into additional turns, cycling this irrigated farmland, and we are off to the races. How many, uh, it's the question, how many land turns do you think we're going to chain together? The library, still relatively full. He doesn't have anything like that Azkanta. The sunken ruin engine, which is really where you start to get the maximum redundancy when you're looking at, you know, at one point, I think we saw looking through ten cards each cycle. Yeah, we've seen this deck do wild things throughout this weekend. Uh, passing the turn here. Uh, Logan needs to get this Teferi off the battlefield immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be hard to fight through however many fogs Eric happens to have in hand because at this point it's very likely he has at least one. Uh, Logan likely looking for a card like Insult to injury at this point. And it's going to be cut to ribbons. He might try and utilize this one. Once it's in exile, it's gone for good, but that's going to be the case. And if he does find something like that insult to injury, that's sort of a, I think that's a decent part of the reason why Settle the Wreckage has really been cropping up recently. It's a main deck inclusion because you don't want it in the sideboard, but it's something that doesn't get impeded by insult. Now, uh, Eric, in a lot of these matches he's played this weekend, has uh, had to play against Sorcerer Spyglass, which could name Teferi. Mm -hmm. uh, Logan, as a cyborg consideration for this matchup, instead chose that insult to injury. So no Sorcerer Spyglass to worry about for Eric this time around. And that does mean that we likely won't see the same mangle horns that we've been such a fan of from Eric Froelich. <laughs> Each time that the opponent has been bringing that one in, he's really used that mangle horn nicely. Yeah, and I, I think he'll still bring the mangle horns in. They, uh, they do uh, trade somewhat effectively, and the fact that they have the ability to kill Scrounger, Beaumont Courier, and Heart of Kieran makes them very reasonable. Uh-oh, it's settled the wreckage, and it's feeling pretty settled right now. That Scrap Heap Scrounger, I honestly thought that was the wreckage, you know? <laughs> I, looking at the art for that card, I wouldn't have expected anything else, but it looks like they have all been made to match. The rest of this board is now exiled, and we are going to be finding some basic lands to... I, I suppose it's a... I bet Eric would tell Logan that that was a fair trade. Yeah, I, I think it's a fair trade. You know, he gets a card for every one of the cards he lost, right? That's true. <laughs> That's a benefit. There was a Ragavan as well, so actually even went up a card. And <laughs> oh my goodness, land. you're right. I have a distinct feeling that uh, Logan Nettles might be wishing a little bit that that cut to ribbons was in his graveyard, though. Adding the, the mana increase actually from the Settle the Wreckage is an interesting kind of consideration to make when you've got these cards like ribbons that could end up in the graveyard. Because if you do this Settle the Wreckage for three creatures, then that means that you're really going to end up losing that three additional life later down the game. That's definitely true. It's Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, only the one Gift of Paradise out on the battlefield. So far, it's just been Eric trying to develop lands, not an enormous amount of action from him as of yet. Chandra continuing to do her thing. Six loyalty at the moment. Always the threat, 
of that ultimate, though, I have to imagine that Teferi is going to be keeping that in check. Cycling the Haze of Pollen, and I think we just drew into a search for Azkanta. It's going to be a couple of lands here, and there it is. So, we aren't at the seven cards of the graveyard yet, but this is just another brisk step into the maximum inevitability that this deck possesses. Yeah, now uh, with this Teferi on eight, it means that Eric will be able to create an emblem on the following turn. Mm -hmm. uh, once he gets that emblem onto the battlefield, uh, every Teferi activation, every draw step uh, will allow him to exile a permanent. Uh, whatever he plays here to, to prevent damage, that's going to give him enough cards in the graveyard that he'll be able to flip into Azkanta the Sunken Ruin on the following turn. And this one is wrapped up. That's going to be the seventh card that Haze of Pollen was able to make card number six. Tra the card off the top of the library from Azkanta, or Search for Azkanta, makes it seven. That transforms. We're going to ultimate this to Fairy. And the reason why we're going to see some more activations is because we've got another copy in hand. And am I seeing what I think I'm seeing at right at the front of Ferlix Hand? I believe you are. Oh, my. And look at that. I think... Oh, because the Azkanta itself, that's going to be the seventh mana required. Transforming mm -hmm. it means that Nexus of Fate is now online, and you can see Logan Nettles doing the math in his head. What are the chances that I get a turn again? Yeah, and he may get another turn, but if he does, he's not going to have any relevant permanence on the battlefield. Because on this next turn, Eric, even with just what's on the battlefield, is going to be exiling both of those scroungers, and then also getting to activate... Uh, as Cant of the Sunken Ruin two different times if he wanted to. And he doesn't even want to, which means he has even better things to do <laughs> with that mana. <laughs> he wants he might do it just once. Who knows? I don't know. He's, he's, he could do it twice. He can still do it twice. Yeah. He's still going to have this Teferi. That plus means that, ooh. And the card that we reveal is Settle the Wreckage. So combat is not going to be the path no matter what. And now we are looking at just a devastatingly bad situation for Logan Nettles here in the semifinals. He was able to grab game one when he didn't really look like he was going to be in a great position to actually do so. Made it work, and now we're just trying to find uh, another way through this, but Logan Nettles, I mean, he's going to be heading into his turn with just... Sure, he's got a lot of mana to work with, but not a whole lot to do. There we go, and it's going to be Glimmer of Genius. Scry <laughs> 2, draw 2. He's seen enough. I'm going to pick up these <laughs> cards. We have hit the conclusion because you're about to draw an additional two cards and start attacking the mana base. And at a certain point, there's just a level that you cannot come back from. Yeah, I mean, there Logan was maybe uh, one turn of his own away from having no permanents left on the battlefield. Wow. And we've seen it time and time again this weekend. The end game of this Nexus of Fate Fog deck is completely unmatched in standard. No, it's no. been a joy to watch. I'm really happy we also, like, right after we talked about the quote-unquote turn four kill, Yeah, he just did it right on camera. <laughs> I mean, Eric Froelich is not the kind of person to make us look silly, you know? He oh, no, definitely not. Right. He, well, he, he makes us show. look silly when I, I suggest that there's something good he could do and then he does something better. <laughs> and in that way, it, it, it could happen, you know? He's here to put Dude. on a show, you know? Yeah. Definitely. I mean, <laughs> it's always an absolute pleasure to, to watch him play, especially with uh, interesting and interactive, uh, especially reactive decks, because I feel like I get to learn a lot from him. And uh, his particular style of play, I think, rewards when he's able to play a strategy that uh, tends to be more reactive. And I think one point that we should really note is the mental stamina required to even play this turbo fog deck and add on top of that that he has been playing it for two days 15 rounds of swiss through the quarterfinals and now in the semifinals he has been doing this math trying to come up with these lines with search for Azkanta with these teferis all weekend that is an incredible amount of mental stamina that he has just been able to demonstrate getting to this point yeah, and I, something that's uh, of note is that when people get good enough, a lot of things that take a lot of mental energy become second nature. And you stop needing to spend so much of your mental capital for the day on doing simple math. 
Uh, Eric is somebody who can calculate uh, incredible odds very easily in his head. Uh, and, I mean, he's showing us weekend after weekend as he's putting up these great results. Yeah. Since, you know, forever. <laughs> Definitely true, but Logan Nettles is going to be giving him a run for his money. It is heading into game three. It is going to be this black-red aggro deck on the play. He was heading into the top eight as the number two seed for the entire event. He has absolutely been on a hot streak all weekend, and he is looking to continue this one and charge his way through these aggressive creatures into the finals. And this is it. This game will decide which of these players will make it to the finals here. And Eric Froelich, I guess he could check that box, get an individual Grand Prix win, which is in no way more respectable than a team Grand Prix win. No, not <laughs> at all. <laughs> but it's another win, you know? Oh, absolutely. Three wins is, I mean, is certainly, uh, I would say, more respectable than two th through just pure objectivity. Oh, ab absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Eric... I'm sure Eric already knows <laughs> that he's one of the very best ever, and I'm also sure that winning probably matters more to him than anybody else, even though he already has those victories, even though he's already in the Hall of Fame, even though he's already proven himself. Because Eric, in my experience with Eric, is somebody who continually strives for greatness and holds himself to a very high standard and wants to win these tournaments. He wants to prove it to himself time and time again that he's still got it, and he clearly does. I mean, it's just like, you you know, if you're not looking to go big, then why are you even searching? You said it before with yeah. Search for Azkanta. That is a mentality that Eric Froelich has applied to his just tournament life. Mm -hmm. Why am I at the tournament if I'm not looking to take it down? So we're taking a look at these opening hands. It is going to be game three coming on up. And we have not yet seen a one-mana play from Black Red Aggro. Seeing a Beaumont Courier come down on the first turn would be a massive step in the right direction because he's struggled with that so far. And it yeah. showed. Logan hasn't had a one-drop yet. It has showed very much in the way that these games have played out that he just has not been continually applying the pressure. And he ends up with this hand where he's really just trying to rely on the resources that he can put together rather than the formidable amount of cards that Scrap Heap Scranger can bear. I mean, even cards like Root Snare and Haze of Pollen are not particularly effective against the Beaumont Courier because it's still getting the card underneath it. It's still going to be more fuel that you can really dig into and tap into later in the game. Absolutely, and that extra fuel gets more powerful post-board because of cards like Insult to Injury, Duress, and Doomfall. Uh, Logan can get to that stage of the game where Eric has that endless stream of fogs, and he can still manage to win now because of the interactive discard spells and the insult to injuries. i got to be honest with you. I'm pretty excited. By the way, I have been waiting all weekend to see someone cast insult to injury, and I haven't seen it yet. We have not seen it yet. It's a pretty exciting card. It, oh. It's a card that I, I feel like I hadn't played against it in Constructed. Mm-hmm. Like, ever. Like, just ever. <laughs> like, ever. I never had somebody cast it against me and constructed until, I want to say, 10 days ago. Uh huh. And then in the last 10 days, like, on the first of those days, I like, somebody played against me. And I was like, oh, that was pretty good. And then, you know, like, the next day, like, I played, like, three matches in a row where people were playing it. And then I played a league the next day, and it was, like, four out of five of my opponents had insult to injury in their deck. It's, like... One of those cards is just having like a meteoric rise currently in standard. That is aptly named based on your experiences. My <laughs> goodness. You just couldn't get enough of that card by accident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, people, a lot of people this week were playing that 18 land red deck with insult to injuries. And when you're trying to be experimental and have fun in standards, you can learn a format. Sure. It is not fun when your opponent's playing an 18 land insult to injury red deck. I can just say that. With absolute certainty. I mean, I probably shouldn't tell you what deck <laughs> I would be on then. Looks like we're going to be jumping on into game three here. So we are going to be taking a look at this battlefield as we see the early turns really start to come together. So there's the Beaumont Courier. It's got the card underneath it. And we are already seeing that one mana play come down. That is good news for Logan Nettles. Following it up with another one mana play and a Canyon Slough. Entering tapped. 
this is the start we were looking for in games one and two. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Logan, he may have less power than he had on the table in those previous games, but the additional uh, cards that he could potentially get out of this Beaumont Courier, uh, those are going to give him a really, really nice advantage as this game progresses. Heart of Kieran joining the battlefield as well. Oh, and a gate is going to stop that one. Two mana for four damage. Though we are still going to have that prowess trigger. This is actually a swing for three. That Soulscar Mage, a one, two. Anytime you cast a non-creature spell, it's going to get plus one, plus one until end of turn. And Eric Froelich, no third land. We're going to be untapping on Logan Nettle's side. He didn't have one either. These two players seem to have agreed to this unspoken <laughs> mentality <laughs> of the third land is out. Let's see what we can do with what we've got. And that really that really seems to favor Nettles. Uh, yes, I would say that uh, the, the being stuck on two or three lands uh, type of game certainly favors the red deck over the, uh, the seven mana instant time warp deck. And it's Irrigated Farmland joining the battlefield. It is his third land, but it does enter the battlefield tapped. Yeah, Eric also with no green mana here. Uh, so even if he did have a fog, uh, he'd be unable to cast it. And on top of that, he can't cast a card like Gift of Paradise, which is another way for him to gain life and correct that mana base. It's going to be Chandra Torture Defiance. Logan Nettles is seeing the weakness, and he is trying to attack it as fast and as hard as he can. Yeah. And now Eric down to 11 before this attack. This attack uh, for six damage, Eric's already fallen to five. And with that Chandra on the other side of the table, I think Logan may have just gotten in underneath. There's the handshake, and it's going to be Logan Nettles, Black Red Aggro, continuing its dominant run in this format. In this day, Turbo Fog, it made it all the way up to the semifinals. Eric Froelich made it all the way up into the semifinals, but when it finally came down to it, the mana base just faltered enough, and this black red deck does not, does not leave an opportunity like that on the table. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why a deck like black red is so good. If your opponent stumbles, you are going to punish them. Yes. Punish them badly. All right, so. We're going to have a little bit more magic. Let's head on down to Ben Friedman and Chris Ferber. They are still in progress in their semifinals match, and it looks like Ben Friedman is up a game on blue-black midrange. White-blue Godfaro's Gift, 20 life, and really looking to take games two and three in the early stage of this one. We're coming in at a great point. We've seen, uh, looks like, strategic planning. Dig a couple cards deep, but not too much action just yet. And it seems like Chris Ferber may have no energy uh, and have uh, no blue mana. Well, who does after this many rounds of magic? You know, it's a <laughs> long day. It's, but we're making it through. And it looks like both of these players now running a little bit light. The blue-black midrange on Ben Friedman's side, he's out of those energy counters as well. He used them all up for this champion of wits. So he's going to draw two and discard two. But then he's going to have to make uh, something happen with his mana base. Both of these players really at uh, half capacity. Yeah. So Chris Ferber also he missed his third land drop. I see in Ben's hand that he has this island. So Ben going to get to uh, play out his game here. It seems like Chris Ferber's in a really rough spot now. And we're going to discard the hand size. It's a God Pharaoh's gift and then a quick pass back. He even drew some cycling cards. He actually could uh, cycle this cast out. He has not decided to do so. It does cost only that singular white mana. Might be able to find him another piece of that, ma that mana base. Yeah, so uh, here perhaps Chris Ferber is looking to uh, use that end step discard to put that God Pharaoh's gift into his graveyard, hoping that just uh, refurbish uh, targeting that Godfire's Gift is enough to win him this game. So uh, using the fact that he had eight cards in his hand to his advantage to put this gift into his graveyard, then going to start looking for lands more aggressively, cycling cards, hoping to go land land into a refurbish to try to steal this one. And it looks like we're actually just going to remain patient. Chris Ferber, now he is looking at that cast out. We did not see him cycle it at the end step. Now going for it on the main phase, and if this is not a land, then he is going to be in a world of trouble. It's irrigated farmlands. The game stays alive. Now the question is, can he get another land and a refurbish? You know, when you're putting a seven mana spell into play for four mana, 
it really looks like you didn't miss quite as many turns. Sure, you're not as far ahead, but you certainly didn't fall too far behind if you start throwing down endless 4-4s. Four and that Champion of Wits is going to do a great job of facilitating that because it is the one creature in the graveyard, but that draw 4 and then discard 2 means that the odds of having another creature as it progresses become very high. On Ben Friedman's side, it is Liliana, Death's Majesty, coming down to the battlefield, plus an up, and we're going to see a land and a Torrential Gear Hulk into the graveyard, and a zombie onto the battlefield. Yeah, now uh, Ben has the option to minus his Liliana to return Torrential Gear Hulks to the battlefield, which can flash back cards like Raska's Contempt for free. Ben Friedman cruising to victory here. Even if Chris Ferber were to assemble a God Pharos gift onto this board, were to draw all those extra cards off the Champion of Wits, then Ben Friedman would still, in my mind, be in a fairly dominant position. This uh, this game looks like the uh, the mana issues of Chris Ferber just caught up to him. My goodness. I, that's a nice little bit of continuity, I suppose. Well, it's not a nice bit of continuity, but from Eric Froelich to Chris Ferber here in these games and just one of those situations in which you shuffle the deck for a reason you know <laughs> and yep. sometimes and sometimes situations like this are going to happen we see negate and angel of invention coming down to the battlefield we see chris ferber deploy his fourth land and let's really see if he can take this setback and realign what it is that he needs to do realign his game plan and try and take that step forward and see if he can combine a, a series of really nice draws, really nice plays to get the win. You know, there's no refurbish in this hand. Okay, well, maybe he'll grab it off the top. And if he's able to get that God Pharaoh's gift, the Angel of Invention is in the graveyard. That will be able to swing in and get a pretty incredible uh, life buffer for any of this aggression that's happened yet. Or go for the Champion of Wits and try and dig further into the library. Yeah, I mean, the major issue, though, is that Ben Friedman, actually, I spotted a negate in his oh. hand recently. So even now, if Chris Ferber is able to do that, he ha just hasn't hit the land drops that he would need to be able to protect the refurbish with counter magic of his own. That's going to be a, <coughs> that's, that's a bad break. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and this Liliana uh, threatening to minus to return that gear hulk, mm -hmm. thus exli exiling this champion of wits on the other side, allowing Ben Friedman to attack in for six, then representing lethal damage on the following turn with whatever's in his hand and the gate back up. I mean, this one looks like it's pretty much over. You know, and the consideration there is that this Liliana Minus, that's before Ben Friedman even spends any of his considerable six mana. A lot of potential there. I mean, Ben Friedman, he is, he is, it's his game to lose. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he takes that Angel of Invention. That means that Chris Ferber doesn't have the option of drawing a land and then slamming an Angel onto the battlefield to buy himself time with those servos and the Angel itself. So we are going to see that minus happen. It's the attack in for six. We are down to eight. There is a lot of damage on the battlefield, but none of it looks like it's going to get the job done. There's a copy of Thopter Arrest, I believe, in hand. Could fire that one down at this Torrential Gear Hulk. But like you said, Ben Friedman holding on to that negate means that even the very slim margins that look to exist very likely don't. It's going to be Champion of Wits instead, drawing two and then discarding two. This will also be a fine blocker for the Torrential Gear Hulk, though Ben Friedman very possibly could just have a quick way to remove it and otherwise will be dealing six damage and putting another zombie on the battlefield. Yeah, I mean, even if uh, this Champion of Wits buys Chris Ferber a turn, it's going to be incredibly difficult to imagine any series of cards in his deck that could uh, result in victory at this point. Because uh, this champion, it's on chump block duty. Mm -hmm. Baral, Chief of Compliance, also joining the battlefield. There's going to be two creatures on blocking duty. Ah, it's such an upward slog at this point. In Making it to the semifinals at this point, it's just so 